Pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidies, or PGTA, refers to the genetic embryo screening test to detect extra or missing chromosomes or extra or missing large pieces of chromosomes. PGTA does not test for any specific inheritable diseases, such as breast cancer or cystic fibrosis. The test will, however, pick up syndromes which are caused by extra or missing chromosomes, such as Down syndrome, which involves an extra chromosome 21, or Turner syndrome, which involves the loss of one X chromosome. This screening tool looks at all 23 pairs of chromosomes in the embryo in order to choose only embryos with the correct number of chromosomes for future transfer. Extra or missing chromosomes cause implantation failure or miscarriage. By performing PGTA, we decrease time to pregnancy and decrease the risk of miscarriage. Patients which are making use of donor eggs or surrogates may also opt for PGTA for these reasons. PGTA is recommended to patients of advanced maternal age because unfortunately as a woman ages, she accumulates chromosomal gains and losses in her eggs. PGTA is also performed in instances of recurrent pregnancy loss or recurrent IVF failure. If you require pre-implantation genetic testing for a translocation or a specific inheritable disease, please let your fertility specialist know as additional arrangements will need to be made prior to your treatment at MedFem. The day of egg retrieval is day zero of embryo development. The eggs are fertilized in the afternoon. There are two ways that eggs can be fertilized, either through IVF insemination or ICSI. The fertilization method is determined by the sperm quality. If sperm parameters are good, meaning the sample has a good count and good motility, then an HBA test is performed to test the sperm's potential to bind to an egg. An HBA slide is covered with molecules which mimic the outside of an egg. The sperm sample is loaded onto the slide and if 80% or more of the motile sperm bind to it, then the sperm sample is suitable for IVF as the sperm exhibits good potential to bind to an egg. If the HBA binding is less than 80%, then ICSI is performed, where the sperm will be injected into the eggs to make sure that it gets inside. If the sperm parameters are too poor to do the HBA test, then ICSI is also performed. When an egg is retrieved from the ovary, it is surrounded by a layer of cumulus cells. These cells help to develop and mature the egg in the ovary. In a natural situation, they will also attract the sperm to the egg. If IVF is performed, the sperm sample is cleaned and the eggs are inseminated. The sperm swim around the eggs, bind and fertilize the eggs on their own. If ICSI is performed, the eggs are stripped clean of the cumulus layer for the embryologist to see inside the egg cell and determine whether the eggs are mature. Only mature eggs that are ready to receive a sperm are injected with sperm. Again, the sperm sample will be cleaned and then sperm are carefully selected for injection. Suitable sperm is immobilized and injected into the eggs via a pipette.
you will receive an update on day one, the day after aspiration, where we will inform you about how many eggs were retrieved, how many were mature, which fertilization method was used, and how many eggs have fertilized. Two pronuclei appear on the morning of day one, indicating that the chromosomes of the egg and the sperm have come together and fertilization has taken place. These zygotes are then cultured uninterrupted until day four. You will only receive the next update on day five. The egg fully supports embryo development up until the day three stage. On day three, the embryo undergoes a crucial molecular conversion where it needs to switch on the sperm DNA and become independent from the egg activating its own metabolism. Should anything go wrong with this process, the embryo will stop growing. Additionally, many embryos with a gain or loss of chromosomes will also undergo arrested development. Therefore, there is always a fallout of embryos and not all embryos will develop to the day 5 stage. Unfortunately, some abnormal embryos will continue to grow and can even be of good quality at the day five or day six stage. Morphological evaluation and grading is not sufficient to determine whether an embryo is normal. Only genetic testing can confirm this. Statistically, the better the embryo grade, the better its chances of having the correct number of chromosomes. The poorer the embryo grade, the more chance it is abnormal in terms of its chromosome number. For this reason, the MedFem IVF lab is very strict in selecting only embryos of good enough quality for biopsy and freezing. It is important to understand the processes that take place in the IVF lab after egg retrieval. And for this reason, the patient should have realistic expectations of the outcome. Patients starting with a high number of eggs may still end up with only a few embryos that will be suitable for biopsy and freezing. Unfortunately, there is also the possibility to end up with no embryos which will be suitable for biopsy and freezing, or with no normal embryos after the testing is performed. A day 5 embryo is called a blastocyst. It has two cell lines, the trophectoderm, which will form the placenta, and the inner cell mass, which will form the fetus. The trophectoderm cells actively pump fluid into the embryo and thereby form a fluid-filled cavity inside the blastocyst. As this cavity develops, it creates pressure inside the embryo, which in a natural situation causes the embryo shell to eventually thin and break open for the embryo to hatch out. The trophectoderm cells are sticky they attach to and invade the uterine lining for implantation to take place. We prepare the embryos for biopsy on day 4 by performing assisted hatching. Using a laser, we create a small hole in the embryo shell. This is done to ensure that the embryo hatches on day 5 when the blastocyst starts to form a fluid-filled cavity. This procedure does not harm the embryos in any way. We do not grade the embryos or update patients on the development on day 4. The reason being that embryos can look good on day 4 but not develop into blastocysts on day 5. If they do develop further, we still need to evaluate whether they are of good enough quality on day 5 to survive the biopsy and freezing procedures. As previously described, hatching is a natural phenomenon. However, it only takes place on day 6 or 7. We simply speed up this process with the assisted hatching by forming a channel in the embryo shell for the cells to push out earlier than they would have naturally. Hatching blastocysts are easier to biopsy as the trophectoderm cells are exposed and easily accessible. It also minimizes damage to the embryo during biopsy. Unfortunately, sometimes the inner cell mass is hatching out and it is impossible to perform the biopsy without damaging the embryo. 
In such instances, patients will have the option to freeze the embryo untested. Only trifectoderm cells are biopsied and sent for testing. The embryo's potential to form a pregnancy will be severely decreased if the inner cell mass is damaged. Please note that not all fertilized eggs will reach the day 5 stage of development and even the ones that do reach day 5 could be of poor quality. Only good quality embryos are biopsied and frozen and they have to be hatching blastocysts. Some embryos are not ready to be biopsied on day 5. They may be a little behind in their development or not of good enough quality. At the MedFem IVF lab, all embryos are grown to the day 6 stage if they are not suitable on day 5. If the embryos are still not developed to the hatching blastocyst stage or are of poor quality on day 6, then they are discarded. Patients will be updated on the development and quality of the embryos on day 5 and day 6 to confirm how many will be biopsied and frozen. We will call you or email you if we cannot reach you by phone. We will go ahead and proceed with the biopsy as per the consent forms if we cannot reach you. Sometimes the embryos are hatching out quite far and we cannot wait for your response as this may compromise the procedure and success rate. The biopsied cells of each embryo are tubed and sent off to the genetics lab, Next Biosciences, for the DNA testing. Straight after biopsy, the embryos are frozen and kept in storage at the MedFem IVF lab. Genetic test results take a minimum of 10 working days from the time the biopsies are sent to Next Biosciences, which means a turnaround time of about two weeks from day 6 of embryo development. Next Biosciences will bill you directly for their test. Once this is paid and the results are ready, Next Biosciences will release the results to MedFem and we will contact you. We will call you or email you if we cannot reach you by phone. Please note that results will not be released to MedFem until Next Biosciences receives your payment. Please be aware that Next Biosciences does not guarantee 100% accuracy on their results. A blastocyst is comprised of approximately 200 to 300 cells. Only 5 to 8 cells are biopsied from the trifectoderm and sent for testing. Sometimes the small section of the embryo does not represent the whole or does not represent the inner cell mass. Such embryos are called mosaic. Mosaicism refers to embryos that contain cells which are genetically different, a mix of normal and abnormal cell lines. These kinds of abnormalities are acquired after fertilization and are random errors which take place when the cells divide during embryo growth. Therefore, mosaicism is independent of patient age and occurs at a similar rate in all patient age groups. Misdiagnosis can occur if the cells that are biopsied are different to the rest of the trifectoderm or different to the inner cell mass. However, should there be even one cell within the biopsy that is different to the rest, the genetic test is sensitive enough to detect the single cell. If less than half of the biopsy is abnormal, the embryo will be reported as low-level mosaic. If more than half of the biopsy is abnormal, the embryo will be reported as high-level mosaic. At MedFem, any abnormal embryos or embryos with a high level of mosaicism are discarded. Normal embryos are kept for future transfers. Embryos with a low level of mosaicism can be kept depending on the abnormalities found and which chromosomes are involved. 
special consent and consultation with your fertility specialist will be required before transfer of a low-level mosaic embryo. We recommend that patients go for non-invasive prenatal testing or NIPT from 10 weeks of pregnancy should they fall pregnant with a tested embryo. The test is non-invasive, involving a simple blood test with blood being drawn from the arm as for other routine blood tests which are performed during pregnancy. The placenta releases DNA into the mother's bloodstream and these chromosomes are then analyzed. Please note that once again, this is a screening test. It is not diagnostic. These test results must not be used as the sole basis for making any decisions such as pregnancy termination. Should a chromosome abnormality be detected, further testing will be required. Very seldom, but unfortunately because it can happen, we need to inform all patients about the risk of having a no signal result. This is usually due to either insufficient or poor quality DNA. In MedFem's experience, this happens in cases where patients insist on biopsy of very average quality embryos because they either have no opportunity to undergo another cycle or only have one or two embryos available. Therefore, the DNA is poor due to the poor quality of the biopsied cells and in most cases the DNA is fragmented and impossible for the genetics lab to screen. If you obtain such a result, you have two choices, either to treat the embryo as if it was never tested, as we do not have a result on it, or you can opt to have the embryo re-biopsied. MedFem will not charge again for the biopsy, but you will be charged for the embryo thawing and freezing, and next biosciences will retest for a discounted price. Please keep in mind that survival rates are decreased when there is a rebiopsy as the embryo has to go through a second round of thawing and freezing. In summary, a genetic result on an embryo will be reported as one of the following. Euploid or normal, which means that the correct number of chromosomes are present in all the biopsied cells. Aneuploid or abnormal, which means that all of the biopsied cells contain incorrect number of chromosomes. Low level mosaic, high level mosaic, or no signal. Please note that an embryo's genetic result will reveal the embryo's gender. However, gender selection is illegal in South Africa. Embryogenetic testing involves three procedures, embryo biopsy, embryo freezing, and the genetic test on the biopsies. The biopsy and freezing procedures are performed and charged by MedFem. The price of the biopsy is irrespective of the number of embryos biopsied. The embryo freezing cost is for a batch of up to six embryos maximum. Additional embryos can be biopsied and frozen at an additional cost. Please ask the embryologist for an accurate quote when you receive updates as it is not often that patients have more than six suitable embryos. The actual genetic test is performed by Next Biosciences and this test is charged per embryo. Please ensure that all your consents are in order and are handed into the IVF lab latest on the day of your or your egg donor's egg retrieval. We hope you found this video informative and helpful and we wish you all the best in your IVF journey.